Welcome back to the Food for Thought podcast. I'm your host, Erin Hallstrom. On today's episode, we're talking with financial expert Jennifer Palmer. Jennifer, who is the CEO and founder of asset based lending firm J. Palmer Collective, is a return guest to the podcast. And she's here to talk about how bank collapses, like the one that happened with Silicon Valley Bank in March, can have a ripple effect for food and beverage manufacturers. We take both a macro and a microeconomics approach to understanding how bank collapses can affect both large and small food and beverage manufacturers. We talk about what processors should be doing when it comes to their finance partners before capping things off with a slew of tips for how to plan and prepare for financial emergencies. Enjoy the episode. Jen, welcome back to the Food for Thought podcast. We last talked to you in summer of 2022. Catch us up with what you're doing now. Well, hi, Erin, and thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back. I appreciate it, and I look forward to catching up. So since we last chat, a lot had happened. On International Women's Day 2023, I launched J. Palmer Collective. We are an asset-based lending firm dedicated to financing women-owned and women-led businesses, as well as the food and beverage products. We created this company to fund entrepreneurs who are focused on sustainability and improving our world. I think for today's episode, we are going to stay in that funding space, that finance space. And I want to talk to you about a big story that's been in the news lately, and that's the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. For those that maybe haven't followed this story as closely, what happened? Well, That is definitely a headline story for sure. So SBB invested in long dated U.S. government bonds. Unfortunately, bonds often have an inverse relationship with interest rates. So when the rates continue to rise, the bond prices fail. Uh, fault, excuse me. So when the Federal Reserve started to hike up the rates rapidly, and they continue to do so, SBB's bond for- portfolio started to lose significant value, and that created a tremendous amount of concern within the industry. Now, if, if the bank was able to hold on to those banks uh, bonds for a number of years until they matured, this would have been fine, and the bank would have received its capital, capital back. However, the economy became more stressed, and many of the bank's customers started drawing out their deposits and the bank didn't have enough cash on hand so it started selling its bonds oftentimes at a steep loss and it started to spook investors and customers and what we witnessed was the fastest bank run in history and it took just 48 hours for from the time that it officially disclosed that it had sold assets to the collapse And, you know, a lot of people are saying, wow, this is so surprising. And I disagree with that. I think that the collapse was concerning, but not surprising. And that's because SBB, it lacked diversification, which inherently means more risk. On a macro level, how might the collapse of SVB and banks like it impact bigger CPG companies? CPG brands, you know, they are like, not unique to any any other company in so many ways, but of course have nuances. So CPG brands that are large and prominent brands, they typically have a bank that they rely on and most of their funds are there. So these companies, they may deposit, you know, all of their clients' collections and all of their cash, cash with one institution they are absolutely going to have to take a closer look and a deep look into who are they, they're banking with. And they should want to diversify across many institutions before doing so. They need to take a harder look into the bank's balance sheet that they want to work with and ask a lot more questions and make sure that they really understand it. We always assume that banks are safe, but we only know this is true if we actually take the time to understand their portfolio as well as their balance sheet. And all of these companies, you know, no matter how big you are and and how strong you are, getting access to liquidity, it's going to become more difficult. It's going to become harder and more expensive for everyone, including the top companies. Many of the top companies in our space, they're used to banks regularly soliciting their business, knocking on their doors. 
but all of the banks were going to face increased pressure from the regulators, even the top banks. And the banks that don't, they'll e they'll be even more proactive in protecting their shareholders' money. And they'll want to make sure that they don't lose it, like we saw with SBB. And so many banks will also have less deposits and they'll need to tighten their lending standards, which means they're going to have to shed assets. They're going to have to exit deals. So many companies within our space, even the top companies within the food and beverage space, they're going to have to think about alternative options because they're they could be faced with their bank telling them that they're exiting this segment of the industry or perhaps that you know, the, the exposure that they have to this client is particularly too small or doesn't yield enough profit. We saw this during the great financial crisis that banks become less reliable. They become scared of their own shadow in many situations and they start becoming a little bit less consistent. So all of the companies within the food and beverage, beverage space, especially the large ones, will have to prepare for their banks perhaps wanting to exit their deal. So on a micro level, how does a bank collapse impact the smaller food or food and beverage companies? Great, great question. You know, the nimble food and beverage companies, they are the lifeblood of the CPG industry. These companies, they're the ones with unique needs and goals, and they often find unique ways of funding their business. So many smaller companies who rely on smaller banks and alternative financial institutions to fund their business will be faced, you know, with conflicting times. Financial institutions, they often borrow from banks and they may have their own liquidity issues. So every company, again, large or small, but especially the smaller companies, they need to understand who they're working with. They need to understand the financial structure of their own financial partners. Financial institutions will always conduct due diligence on their clients. So the small clients, you know, they often feel that they're powerless and, and they're just grateful for the funding that they're getting. They must also conduct their own due diligence. They must become empowered and they must be proactive. They have to make sure that they ask questions of their financial partners and they understand that their financial partners will be around in, for you know, the next few years, understand their lifeline and, and how they will stay afloat during the difficult times that will likely come. So now is an excellent time for the smaller companies to rethink how they're fueling their growth and how they're they're working with their partners and who they're working with. Should food companies, big or small, um, should they be worried right now? You know, they shouldn't be worried. They should be concerned, prepared. They should be thoughtful, but they need to not be worried. You know, planning is critical. And as long as you're not caught off guard, you'll be fine. So you have to prepare. Now is a great time to review your financial needs for today as well as tomorrow. Consider the range of borrowing and financial options that you have and really think about who you're partnering with and perhaps rethink who you're partnering with. And, and what value does your existing partner bring to your company? Is it a partnership or is it purely just a financial relationship? Does that company understand the food industry, the nuances to it? Do they understand the unique needs to the fast growing brands, how the big suppliers and the big box retailers might be affected by this? And, and at the end of the day, you really have to think to yourself, does your financial partner, do they firmly believe in your business? And do you think that they'll be there with you in good times and bad? There is no use to having your lender be there with you only in the good times. And when it rains, the last thing you want is for your financial partner to take away your umbrella. So let's wrap up um, this incredibly informative conversation <laughs> um, talking about what should companies be doing right now? Kind of some parting thoughts, wisdom. I'm curious to know. One of the things that we learned from the collapse of SBB is that there wasn't a lot of attention being paid to the liability side of their balance sheet. And sometimes we forget that there's two sides to a balance sheet. You must review both sides of your balance sheet. There's the assets and there's the liability side. And businesses must look at both sides and mitigate the risk on both the left and the right. So, you know, when you're looking at your asset side, what do you have? Take your assets, diversify your liquid assets between product type as well as who those assets are with. So think about the institutions that you're working with. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Split up the funds amongst 
different institutions, make sure you know who you're going to put those with. And then across the institutions, also diversify from a product type. So cash, equities, money market accounts. It's difficult times and it's scary to put your money to work and keep investing. But in bad times, that's when you should put your money to work because you can get a deal. And then on the other side of the balance sheet, really look at your debt and equity side. From the equity side, do you have enough? You know, do you have a partner who is going to continue with you? Raising funds will be harder. So the sooner that you raise funds, the better. It's going to become more expensive. It's going to become higher hurdle rates and greater emphasis on returns and even more focus on profitability. So if you can lock in additional equity now, but as long as it's a right deal, don't take a bad deal if it doesn't feel right. And from the liability side, secure a line of credit. You might think that you don't need one, but look at it as an insurance policy. We have no idea what the market's going to look like in six, six months from now. But one thing I know for sure is that obtaining credit is going to be much more difficult. So lock in a line of credit if you don't have one. Many companies are afraid of taking on debt. Debt is not a four letter word. I know that we grew up thinking debt was bad, but when it comes to your business, it is not. It is temporary and debt can be repaid. So get a line of credit now if you don't have one. And if you do have one, ask for a line increase. Ask for more availability and also consider alternatives. Think about asking your vendors for more flexibility, better supply terms. Think about where else you can create liquidity on your balance sheet. But at the end of the day, don't be spooked by what's going on. I know there's a lot of uncertainty and concern in the market, but there are a lot of options out there. Consider the non-traditional funding options that you need to help your company grow. These companies, they're not, they're not subject to a bank run. So think about the private investors from a debt or equity side who are not subject to bank runs because those could be the lifeline that you need in 23. If listeners wanted to learn more about you, and or J. Palmer Collective, how could they find you? Well, they can find me on my website, jpalmercollective.com. And again, we are an asset-based lending company dedicated to inclusivity. So what we do is we provide customized financing solutions with white glove consultative services designed to help companies grow sustainably and for the founders to retain their equity. It's very important that companies now think about dilution more than ever. So if you can grow your company without diluting your ownership interest, now more than ever is the time to find the way to do so. Well, Jen, thank you so much for all of this really important, um, timely, and just important information. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Food for Thought podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I loved it. everyone listening to the Food for Thought podcast today, thank you for tuning in. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and just about everywhere you can listen to a podcast. Be sure to tune in next time as we talk more about the stories behind the headlines of the food and beverage industry. Take care. Have a great day.